Most of the videos on the channel that many of you are used to are about planets, stars, about the universe out there. But today we're going to come back to Earth and talk about something else incredible pretty much right under our feet. Something that has always was discovered completely unexpectedly, somewhat by accident, very close to Boston in the US. And with a sample collected back in 2019. And here, when the scientific team put these samples under extremely powerful transmission electron microscopes, the ones that usually use the electron beams in order to magnify an object, they discovered an incredible unexpected biome that we've never seen before. An entire collection of incredible looking viruses, some even possessing what seems to be basically arms, some coming in very unusual, never before seen shapes, and some even having something that resembles hair. With many of these viruses being extremely complex and actually being some of the largest viruses we've ever seen. In essence, possibly taking us a tiny step closer, first of all, in trying to figure out exactly what viruses actually are. I mean, are they life? Are they something in between? Are they just their own thing that defy explanation? And second of all, taking us a step closer in explaining the origin of life. So, hello, wonderful person. This is Anton. Let's come back to planet Earth and discuss amazing structural diversity of giant virus-like particles in forest soil. Because in this case, it's not even certain exactly what these are. I mean, technically, I guess we think it's viruses, but they seem to be very, very complex. And some of them do seem to possess structures and things that no other virus is known to possess. And so let's discuss some of these details. But I guess let's start with the obvious. The things that we already know from previous discoveries, some which you might find in the description. There's actually a family of viruses known as Nucleocytoviricota. Yeah, you try saying that five times fast. That's basically known as the group of viruses with extreme complexity and possessing a lot of complex properties that no other virus seems to have. For example, unlike other viruses, especially viruses with very specific mechanisms when it comes to replication, this unusual group of viruses seems to be able to replicate in different ways and even in different parts of the host cell. On top of this, many of them are giant in size. The largest found so far is approximately 1500 nanometers, or about 10 to 15 times larger than a typical cold virus, and at least 3 times larger than viruses we're discussing today. Intriguingly, this virus was actually found in ancient deposits in Siberia from ice that was about 30,000 years old. And intriguingly, even after 30,000 years, it was still able to infect amoeba or its primary host. And so a lot of these marine viruses that often use amoeba or even algae for reproduction become extremely complex and somewhat large in size. But what's unusual for these types of viruses is the fact that even their genome is way more complex than any other virus known to us. It actually involves different types of genes involved in DNA repair, replication, transcription, translation, and all of the necessary processes to maintain DNA that's usually common in a typical cell, but is never seen in viruses. Even when it comes to the size of the genome, a typical giant virus will have anywhere from about 500 to even 1200 different proteins that it's able to code using genes. If you actually watched a previous video on the synthetic cell that scientists were able to create by removing unnecessary genes, that's basically three times higher than an actual biological cell. So here we have a virus that seems to have more genes than some of the simple cells. And so by itself, that phylum of viruses has already presented quite a lot of different mysteries. But more importantly, presented a lot of features that we generally associate with actual life. So to some extent, it presented a potential explanation or a potential connection between living cells and ancient viruses. But the results from this study take all of this complexity to a completely new level. Here we discover incredible diversity of these unusual giant viruses, which seem to reveal extraordinary shapes and unusual features that we've never seen before anywhere and that are still kind of difficult to explain. In this case, even capturing cells in the process of being infected by viruses, which is an absolutely incredible image. Here's actually another cell with a slightly different virus. In this case, I believe this is a myovirus entering a cell by basically drilling inside of it. And here's a slightly different virus doing the same to a slightly different cell. And seeing something like this in real life is absolutely mind-blowing. 
This physically shows us how viruses invade a cell. I mean, obviously in this case, this is all frozen, so it's no longer active, but it got captured right before this virus was able to infect the cell. And intriguingly, quite a lot of these large viruses exhibited a lot of beautiful geometric shapes. In this case, this is known as the icosahedral capsid, with all of them produced in a very similar way. A result of a single amino acid that essentially takes a part of a cell, a host cell, and creates a kind of a three-dimensional origami out of it. But in this case, the size itself actually depends on a single mutation inside the amino acid, which is why some of these cells are able to grow to tremendous sizes. Some of which you can see right here. But I guess more intriguingly, many of them do seem to contain additional features. For example, this one they decided to name a turtle. I guess because it sort of resembles a sea turtle. But this is at least 400 nanometers across, making this one of the larger such shapes. Then we have this unusual formation that they now named Gorgon, basically named after Medusa, mostly because of the protrusions resembling the snakes around Medusa's head. And as you can see, this one is also pretty large in size. These unusual protrusions, whose function is obviously unknown, seem to be at least a thousand nanometers across. Then we have these very strange star-like formations, which in this case the researchers named the Christmas star. Exactly how this is formed, and what function any of this has, is obviously unknown. Then we have that weird hairy one, with really strange formations on the surface, in essence showing a very large diversity of capsid fibers. Very short, thin fibers on the surface of the geometrical capsid, whose purpose is obviously once again unknown. Now it's most likely used for some sort of an attachment, or to possibly help invade the cell, but that's just guesswork. Then there are these two that they think look like supernova, which I guess is kind of true, and so they named them supernova. These viruses seem to contain very similar fibers, but in this case entangled across the capsid, creating an additional thick layer. But they also seem to possess other tendrils that extend beyond. We also have some more unusual tubular shapes. In this case, they actually call them the plumber. But also discovering unusual triangular shapes we've never seen before in any virus phylum previously observed. Which of course means that this is possibly a completely new discovery. And honestly, it's just worth going through some of these pictures because a lot of them are absolutely mind-blowing. It's insane how far the technology has come when it comes to electron microscopy. We can now take pictures, very accurate pictures, of what seems to be some of the smallest things out there, viruses, with the images themselves being relatively high quality and very detailed. Well, obviously this is just morphological observations for now, just showing us how extremely diverse all of this is. The true function of any of this is not really going to be known to us for many, many years. And what's even more mind-blowing is the fact that this was discovered in a typical US forest in just a few hundred grams of soil, with just a ridiculous diversity discovered after just a few images. A unique hidden world right under our feet. Super impressive, incredible work, and incredible images. But I guess once we actually figure out what's going on here, or once someone discovers what some of these viruses are, we're probably going to come back and talk more about this, because at the moment there is really no explanation. These viruses are definitely important for a lot of different ecosystems, and as you might have learned from some of the previous videos, quite a lot of viruses are also important for our own life. As a matter of fact, as I mentioned before, approximately 7% of your DNA is viruses. But the incredible genetic diversity of these types of viruses is of course of particular interest, because they might help us answer questions on the origins of life. But until we get closer to these answers, or until something else really good is discovered here, that's pretty much it. Check out previous videos on similar topics in the description below, come back tomorrow to learn something else, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.